All right, I'm here at the Snowy Mountain Rifles booth. I got Paul here, and we're gonna talk about muzzle brake. So we just adding the snowflake brake to the Gohan Gear Shop. So I got the expert here, so I figured he could you know talk about it. I don't know how long, how long have I known you? Like, oh, a good like, five, six years. Yeah, at so least. I've known yeah. Paul for a long time. I've been shooting his brakes the entire last hunting season. Killed six animals with it. Absolutely love the brake. But we got the expert here, so I want to have him run through the process. You know why these brakes are so badass? Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited to be in the Gohan Gear Shop. I've been working on that for a while, so we're going to talk about our brakes today, called the Snowflake Muzzle Brake. Uh, name comes from kind of our unique design here on the muzzle end. Looks like a snowflake, but it's also probably our most useful feature on these brakes. So um, that muzzle end fits a 3 8 Allen wrench. 3 8 which is super great, handy in the field. Yep, so we carry them, you know, in our Fix It Sticks kit. Uh, we send out one of these little 3 8 heads that fits in there with every single one of our brakes. Slides right in the end. Then you can just torque it on like that. So um, we do still provide flats, right? So if we are in the field, we don't have this tool, we can get something Keep on something here to get the brake on and off if something were to happen. Um, but this really saves us a lot of time in torquing yeah. the brake down. So that's our main functionality feature. Obviously the flats, we're gonna use the level yeah, on there the too to get there. level when we're getting this thing mounted. So And I like um, that self-timing so I can do this at home by myself. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the great thing about it. No matter if you already have a rifle, you're looking to buy a new rifle, Buy the brake, it's an upgrade on the brake, take it home, it's as simple as leveling your gun and torquing the brake on. Okay, yep. So we're gonna walk through how we torque this thing on here in just a minute. We'll talk about some other features of the brake here. Different configurations, we have our titanium three port. Brady's got some other configurations here. Again, titanium three port, and you can see these are in different diameters. So we've got the big guy here, which is one, two, five, zero. Uh, basically your size for your straight taper competition barrels. Um, then we've got our 995 diameter, which is for Sendero contours, carbon Sendero, steel Senderos. Yep. And then we actually just launched this brake. We got about three here at SHOT Show. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen that one before. First three we've made, uh, 845 diameter, really good for your thinner profile barrels, number threes, number fours, up to Sendero light. So um, obviously they just fit a lot cleaner on the barrel when they're yeah, the right profile. Yeah, like that clean look, yeah. Yeah, much cleaner. So, and then we do, we do make them in two port as well. So three port, four port, two port, titanium and stainless steel. Got some options. So we got options. Yep. Um, options are good. Options are good, right? So titanium, stainless, same performance, basically a weight, right? Weight if we're trying to yep. stay light, uh, if you're putting it on a competition gun or you're not so weight yeah. oriented, you can go with the stainless. Yeah, I've been running that titanium one all year. I'm absolutely so loving it. We'll talk a little bit here. Better, guys. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit here about the internal port design as well. So we spent about eight months developing this port design. Uh, we built a custom sled that we could bolt a barrel to action onto, actually get a reading onto a sensor, see what our energy was, uh, reduced energy uh, in foot pounds, and then we could tweak the internals of our ports from there. Yeah, so, so it's not like you just drilled something and said, yeah, it's good enough. You no, guys we took the time to we, make it right. We spent almost a year on this thing. So. Um, when you look at the internals of the brake, we've got a really big deep dish radius yep. in the front. And what we found is when that gas comes through and hits that front radius, it really bounces it and rolls it back around in there. And then we actually took the back of our ports and angled them at 90 degrees. So when it bounces back around and hits that back wall, mm -hmm. it kicks it, it out kicks it at a straight 90 degrees so it's not blowing yep. back. Everything's comes back to you, you can track impacts. Or yep, everything comes straight back in a linear line as far as recoil, but it also blows that it's muzzle blast, that muzzle velocity or muzzle energy yep. straight out to the side so shooters and spotters aren't, aren't getting that. Yep. So. I was looking at a brake and I'm like, how do those guys cut that? That's pretty fancy tooling. Yeah, right? so uh, a lot of simultaneous fifth axis work in there in the machine. Uh, fancy tooling, um, a lot of time spent on that, but yeah. that's up to Levi and our design team. So yeah, super cool. Um, last kind of feature we'll talk about that we wanted to incorporate on this is just on the timing nut, something that was slim, looked clean. You know, mm -hmm. most sell timing brakes again. You're putting them on with crescent wrenches. Yep. Um, not what we have to do with this 3/8 Allen wrench feature. Mm -hmm. But most brakes, crescent wrenches, you're marring up your material. Yeah. Don't want that. Want a nice looking gun. Yeah. So we didn't need that. So all of our nuts are titanium as well. Um, just a clean look, clean finish. Uh, we get them sent off and get a special titanium anodized coating put on here. So that also helps with, you know, we still suggest a little bit of ANICs yep. on both the threads, but this helps from keeping, getting the thread stuck once we get gotcha. a lot of that carbon build up in there. So 
those are kind of the main features of the brake. Um, obviously, at, most guys are choosing titanium. Yeah. They're willing to spend a little bit of the extra money for the weight. Yep. You know, we're saving a little over two ounces in comparison from like a three port mm -hmm. to a three port. Like, you know, that 845 brake is 1.7 ounces total in weight. Gosh dang. And the two port version is under an ounce. Yeah, so, so you're not, not adding any yeah, weight. Yeah, we're not adding. But you're gaining a little bit more performance and making it, you know, like I said, track impacts. Are, yeah, we're not adding weight and a lot of times we're actually reducing weight, right? A lot of, a lot of even oh, yeah. factory guns today yeah, are coming with a, with a stainless muzzle brake already on the end. Yep. So we're pulling that off, replacing it with a much more effective brake as far as recoil reduction percentage. Mm -hmm. We're getting about 65 to 68% recoil reduction Sign with our up. three port brakes. So uh, yeah, a lot of times we're saving weight, saving recoil. Um, and like you said, what's important to me is being able to spot my impacts downrange. Yeah. Especially when I'm hunting solo yeah. a lot of times, I want that confidence that I know it can hit the animal perfectly every single time. Yep, and that's that's what that's what's important to me about a muzzle break. Like it's great to shoot a gun with less recoil, especially yep. if you're shooting it a lot, everybody enjoys that. But spotting our impacts downrange, whether it's on a target, you know, we're shooting competition, we're shooting animals, mm -hmm. especially if we're hunting by ourselves or don't have somebody spotting for us in a spotting exactly. scope, being able to spot our impacts downrange. So those are kind of the main features of the brake. Uh, now we'll talk about mounting it. Okay, yeah. So as you can see here, I've got the gun level already. So uh, scope is already level. You know, most of the time I'm running a level on my scopes. I don't have one on here, but if yep. we know our scope's level, the level on the scope is level, then we can go off of that too, especially right if we only had one level with us. You know, I'm a big component of just making sure all my torques and everything's right on my guns when I go into the field. Yep. Every time I go somewhere, you know, I check my zero, I check my action screw torques, I check my ring torques, I check my muzzle brake torque before we're gonna go in the field and hunt that animal. Let's, Everything matters. Let's make sure all that's done right. So that's another reason for the creation of the 3 8 Allen head in the face of this brake is we can do it in the field. Yeah, that's we the biggest thing. We gotta carry one little tool, right? Yep. One little tool and we can always make sure that torque is correct. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, so again, we're level here, we're level here. This is exactly how I do it in the shop. If the gun's already put together, a lot of times when we're putting barreled action together and it's in the vise, I'm doing it the same way, leveling off the top of the action. So yeah, level here, level here. Um, as you can see, this brake is currently loose, yep, just hand loose. tight. So what we wanna do when we install these is we're gonna take the timing nut and we're gonna bring it all the way up to the brake shoulder, right? So these brakes, the brakes are right hand threads timing nuts or left hand threads. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna bring that brake all the way up to the shoulder. Even I forget what direction to go quite often. So then we're just gonna, you know, if we're starting from scratch here, we're just gonna spin that brake on until we hit the shoulder of the barrel, yep. right? So obviously we're not level here. So what we're gonna wanna do is spin this brake slightly past level the other direction. And after you do this four or five times, you kind of know, kinda know what play, angle yeah. you need there. That's what I figured out myself too. Yeah, so we're slightly off center the other direction. We've now tightened our timing nut to the shoulder of the barrel. Yep. We're just gonna give that a good hand snug. We've still got a little bit angle left here to come rotate come to around, level, yep. right? So um, our torque settings we recommend are eight to nine foot pounds on stainless and 12 foot pounds on titanium. That titanium being so light likes to vibrate a little yep. bit more. Um, as far as uh, as far as the, the lockup of the threads, mm -hmm. but I shoot these brakes to test them all the time, just hand tight. So again, if we had a problem in the field and we didn't have a tool, you can, we can still exactly. just you know give that thing a real good snug, yep. hand That's tight. That's a good thing to talk about, yeah. And and we should be okay. Yep. Right? You never know when so, you get something in the brake and you got to take that thing off in the field. Yeah, you, you get something stuck in there. You know, the gun takes a bad tumble. Yep. I mean, we designed these threads to stay tight at that torque spec. I've never had mine come loose in the field. Mm -hmm horseback, you know, taking it to Kyrgyzstan, taking it to Alaska, flying in a plane, yep. jet boat, horseback, getting beat up, and then shoot an animal on day 10. I've never had that thing be loose. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm just a big proponent of double checks. Yep. If we're spending all that time and energy hunting, let's exactly. make sure we don't miss an animal because we have a break loose. So again, um, the way the torques work on these, the way the threads work on these, hand tight does work. Yep. But we want to we want to set that torque setting on it. So mm -hmm. now we're just not quite level. So we're gonna take this again. This is why we have the flats on the brake. I think that flat thing's so perfect yep. for just doing this. If we run a magnetic level, it snaps right on there. You know, the mm -hmm. titanium's not quite as magnetic yep. as the stainless, but this is a titanium brake on here, and you can yep. see that thing snaps yep. right on there. Especially for a guy like me who's so like detail oriented. If I see that thing slightly off, it bugs me. Yeah. But now I can actually put a level on there and make sure it's gonna be level. Yep, exactly. So what I suggest for guys to do too is actually use a torque wrench, you know, or a handheld uh, a torque uh, torque wrench there and set it to that torque setting and then feel how much pressure you have to put on there. Uh -huh. So that'll kind of just get your hand used to oh, what yeah. 12 foot pounds yeah, feels like. So if I do it all day long, 
then I kind of know what that feels like because we not, might not be carrying a torque wrench in the field. So mm -hmm. again, this is getting kind of nitpicky, but yep. again, I just like things to be perfect. Yep. Right, so we can see we're slightly off center here. We're gonna take our 3 Allen head. This one's in a fix it sticks kit. Slide that in there. And torque to level. So. Perfect every time. Done, perfect. I can tell you just by feel, that's a little over our 12 foot pound recommendation right there. So you can play with that. You might have to take it on and off a yep. few times, especially if you're using torque wrench to hit that torque setting at the perfect spot. Um, but yeah, simple as that, brakes on, ready to shoot, done deal. Awesome. So that's basically the overview of the Snowflake Brake by Snowy Mountain Rifles and available in the gear shop right now. So yep. I appreciate your time, Paul. Hey, awesome, appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Oh, gotta get in the way, but yeah, <laughs> thank you, buddy. Yep, thank you.